Hey folks, welcome back. This is our weekly trading preview and market analysis for the week of Monday, October the 24th, 2022. Okay, let's jump right into it again. This is for the week of October the 24th, 2022. We had a really, really green week last week, and uh, I think the question this week is, can we continue that? Now, we look at our uh, technical matrix here with about 12 different technical indicators, multiple overlays of moving averages, both simple and exponential, and we, of course, try to pin down where we're at on pivot points. Uh, generally, I'm looking at either the classic or the Woody's pivot point. They usually are fairly close together and trying to determine what the price action is going to look like for this week. Uh, we are in a uh, sort of a strong sell mode still on the weeklies. Uh, dailies have turned to a slight bullish slant. So it'll be interesting to see how those sort of work out <clears throat> as the week progresses. If you look at the key support and resistance areas on the E-mini, which is what I use, you usually, usually use for my analyses. I like the con continuity of the futures contracts. You can see that we are uh, still right here sitting on this cliff that I have talked about over and over and over again, going all the way back to the June lows. This has just been a huge demarcation point. We're getting some fairly neutral readings. Uh, I, that would, I think, be indicative if you looked at Again, our technical analyses on a daily basis, which right now is flashing a sort of weak buy signal, but our weekly analyses here that is still in the sell mode. So I would imagine that that's going to uh, resolve this week one way or the other, uh, as we do tend to use this cliff right in this area here uh, as a magnet, but it also is a catalyst to pushing us up or down one way or the other. About this 37 80 level is where we seem to be sticking for quite a while. You look at the key support and resistance levels of all of the major indices that we focus on, which would be the SPY, you know, as represented by the ETFs. It would be the SPY, the Qs, and the IWM. You can see that there's all fairly uh, in sync with each other. We've had a lot more, uh, I think, pressure or bigger size moves, you could say, on the NASDAQ, on the Qs. Uh, but we are finally, again, I think what's interesting is getting a pullback here on the VIX. And so that does lend itself to maybe potentially getting a, a little bit of a relief rally continuing here up off these cliffs. We'll have to see. I think today, Monday, uh, is going to be an interesting day in terms of where we go with the marketplace. On our sector rotation areas, uh, these are the major sectors that we look at in the marketplace. And uh, this is the one week results. You can see that there's uh, for the first time in a while, there's pretty much green across the board with energy absolutely just pushing higher. Uh, it was pr pretty much every single day last week, you just saw energy pushing higher and higher. Now that's juxtaposed against what Nat Gas, it, which is part of the energy sector, is doing. Nat Gas key continues to push down, but oil has more than made up for that uh, on the upside. And uh, we're always looking for sectors in the marketplace that maybe are a little bit oversold and could offer a potentially nice buying opportunity or areas that are overbought and could offer a potentially nice shorting opportunity. Uh, we've been working for several weeks now, a healthcare trade, uh, based on the fact that it was one of the most oversold categories. Uh, and now we're probably starting to look a little bit at this energy sector and looking for some shorting opportunities here. So again, take a look at the sector analyses. You can look at it on a, uh, a weekly basis here and get in a little bit of an idea of uh, what's working and what's not, and maybe some opportunities for shorting or going long the market as the case may be. Our heat map for last week, you can see was pretty much across the board. Uh, a, a pretty strong week for the marketplace. So again, I think the, the all that really did for us was push, push us back up 
uh, onto the cliff that we've been on for so long. So we'll have to see how that develops over time. It was a really strong week, as I said. It, it was one of the greenest weeks that we have had in the marketplace across the board uh, with our indices um, since uh, since June, since since the 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 initial big market crash initially took off uh, and bottomed, which would have been back in June. Um, and so that was a really strong week. And we'll have to, again, see if we get any follow through today. We'll watching the futures right now. And they're fairly flat right now. So not really tipping its hand here this morning as to where we're going to go. But one of the things, again, that uh, you see here, all of the indices are green, but we get this question quite a bit with our four DTE trades. And that is why do we trade the SPY and the Q simultaneously? Aren't all, don't all the indices track each other? Well, you can see obviously they don't. Uh, over the long period of time, six months, 12 months, they're usually pretty darn close to each other, but you can see that on a weekly basis, in fact, we trade all of these. We, we, we have a very specific strategy that we use with the DIA. We have a very specific strategy that we use with the IWM. And then we have a different strategy that we use with the spies and the queues. So we're well, we're, we're well represented across all of the major indices that we trade, but we trade them all with different, in, uh, different strategies, different setups. And you can see that there is merit in diversifying amongst them. Again, last week was a sort of extraordinarily strong week. Uh, it is not uncommon to see the major indices each week diverge enough that one or two might be positive and uh, one or two might actually be in the negative. Uh, that wasn't the case obviously last week, but it can and it does happen quite a bit. So again, diversification among uh, indices is also an important aspect of what we do. We try to look at a couple of indicators that are uh, maybe um, contrary indicators, contrarian type setups that we look for that give us an idea of, you know, again, just the old adage, when everybody's buying, you should be selling. When everybody's selling, you should probably be buying. And the put call ratio uh, is one of those. Um, last week, we were just under one, and we're actually continuing to drop right now. This past week, we came in uh, Friday. We finished at, uh, at 0.83 which uh, indicates that there's not a lot of fear in this marketplace. There's certainly not uh, any worry uh, about a capitulation, at least at this point. And so um, we're getting a little bit more back to a neutral rating. Last week's expected move in the marketplace was around 121 points. And uh, it's dropped considerably this week. We don't have a ton of economic news and reports scheduled for this week. We have a few, but nothing really major. Uh, and uh, other than earnings, we, we're in a full swing right now with earnings reports. And so I do think that most of these major earnings reports for this week are gonna probably be what end up driving this market. But we are coming down on the expected move, down to about 114 um, on our expected move that's starting to get down to where we will be challenged on our premiums later in the day. We have had the luxury as of late of either A, waiting quite a bit into the day to uh, put our trade on, our zero DT I'm referring to, and or uh, we can get a zero DTE done very quickly in the day and then look to reload and do it again later in the day uh, as uh, our expected moves come down, that uh, becomes harder and harder to find the premium to be able to do that. We look at a heat map and, uh, you know, I, I, I talk about these quite a bit. Uh, and you can again see sort of that cliff that I talk about. This was the June lows down in here. We rebounded smartly off of that. We came back down to that cliff level. We've broken down below that here uh, about the, the, the middle or so of September. And then really, we, we've been fighting to get back up above that. And uh, again, today is, I think, going to be just another one of those days of seeing if we can get back up above that uh, cliff level that we've been sort of clinging to since, uh, again, sort of the latter part of September. But you look at a heat map here, and uh, we've talked about this vacuum 
area that we are in, that's a chop zone. So that's what we've been in for uh, a good solid month now. We've been trading inside of this chop zone. And uh, so again, I think you'll, you'll see that this is gonna resolve one way or another here shortly. Uh, you can see there was a lot of buying pressure down in here. You know, the red lines denote where the buying pressure is uh, and, and uh, buying and selling pressure. And uh, same thing up here on the, the top side. So again, I think we're just stuck in this chop zone. I have to see how it resolves. It'll be interesting to see, I think, today's price action uh, to see because we did have a very nice push to the upside on Friday. See if we can get any carry through, uh, carry uh, uh, follow through uh, today. It's been tough uh, for the marketplace to get follow through to the upside. Uh, we've had some pretty strong days, but in terms of follow through, it's been tough. So again, I think we're right back into that vacuum zone. The only difference for me this time is that we are closer to the resistance side uh, than we are the support side. So again, that would uh, lend me to believe that we're going to have a little bit more potential for downside than upside. But we'll, again, see how that pans out. We do look at uh, another contrarian indicator, which is the fear and greed sentiment reading. And uh, that's a very popular way to sort of... Um, uh, canonize just all of the different areas that uh, sort of monitor fear and greed in the marketplace and use that again as a contrarian indicator. Well, <clears throat> you know what? We are right back to neutral. So again, those individuals that were hoping uh, for a capitulation in the marketplace in order to confirm a downside support level and uh, thus an, uh, uh, you know back to a bullish upward move, well, we, we, we certainly didn't get that. We never got capitulation. And now we're very much back to a, a non-pulsed market here. Uh, and that can be a tough one to trade. Uh, neutral ratings are, for me, uh, about the worst type of market to trade. Extreme greed, uh, when we're pushing nosebleed levels, all-time highs. Extreme fears, where the market is just crashing to the floor and people jumping out of buildings. Those are both fairly easy to trade because you have a very strong trend. Neutral markets uh, tend to just put us in that chop zone. So it is a, a tough area to trade. It's interesting uh, if we look at the open interest here in the marketplace, uh, obviously 4,000 is a huge, huge level in this marketplace and it hasn't really come into play in a little bit. But with this little push up that we have had as of late, you're starting to see a little bit more volume come in here at the 4,000 level. But as, as I'm filming this right now, uh, we're at about 37.75. So we're uh, on the, the S&P, uh, excuse me, let me get the S&P, that's the futures. Futures are up about 11 points right now. Uh, the S&P as we closed on Friday is, is, at 37.52. So again, we're probably up around 37.65 or so uh, on the the uh, SPX looking for an open here this morning. So we're going to be somewhere right in this area right in here. Again, you don't see that, that this is reflective of that neutral rating in the marketplace. You don't see a lot of uh, you know, big gamma walls where we're currently sitting at. Uh, I think that we do need to either push up to get past that 3,800 level, which is a big level, or get back down this 3,700 level. So again, that's a that's a pretty wide chop zone, but that's basically where we're at right now is inside of this really large chop, uh, chop zone. Um, 36.85 for me down here on the put side would, would get us sort of moving down. And I can give you some of my levels here uh, that I'm looking at. In fact, we can come back to uh, the chart for just a second and I'll do it there. We can get there. Okay, here we go. Uh, a couple of levels for you to think about for, uh, for me and, and as I get started trading here today, um, on the uh, support levels, let's go with support first. 
So my downside support levels are at 37.50. We're a little bit above that right now as uh, I'm typing this out. 37.50 would be a, a big level on the downside. 37.25 down below that is a big level. 3700, but it's really for me about 3705. You 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 could say 3700 as well. That that's a zone right in there. And I think if the bears can push down below 3700, the next level down is not that far down. It's 3690. But if the if they the bears can get below 3690, I think they're back in charge again. And I think we get a push to the downside there. So those would be some of the numbers that I would be looking for on the support side. Uh, on resistance levels for today to sort of start us off, uh, 37.50 again. I think that's a, a big demarcation point. We have a, a, a zero DTE trade call side that we have rolled to the 37.50s today. So we'll be working on that today. 37.50, 37.80 uh, would be the next level up for me. And then 38.05 uh, above that. Uh, and then 3825 uh, above that. And then 3872. 3872 is the big one for me. 3872. Uh, I think if the bulls could actually push above 3872, they might be able to break this thing back up into the uh, uh, either point of control or the VWAP area that it has also spent a lot of time. Uh, back since May of last of this year, uh, consolidating. So that would be another uh, range up there of chop, but it would be quite a bit higher, obviously, than where we are right now. Our trading ideas for this week, again, it's not a, a huge news-driven week this week, but there are some things to take a look at. We do have Yellen uh, talking today at 11 a.m. Eastern time. That can or can't be moving uh, the markets potentially. We'll have to see, wait and see. But our core trades for Monday are as uh, almost always the same. We're gonna focus on a zero DT index trade today. We do have a managed trade. Uh, we're gonna, uh, we are going to manage a trade that we rolled from Friday. Uh, we have an IWM weekly credit strangle that we have uh, had just some amazing, amazing success the last three or four weeks. We went for a little run there where uh, every one of our trades was profitable, but they were slightly below average on our income uh, that we had expected out of it. Now we're on about a four week roll where they've been above average. So, and that's interesting how that works out. Um, average is the best of the worst and the worst of the best, but we're gonna hope this week that we can still maintain some good premium in this. Uh, and, I, and I just looked primarily, uh, just uh, preliminarily at, at the trade here just a moment ago, and it does look pretty good for this week. So we're going to reinitiate our weekly IWM credit strangle. We're going to reinitiate our weekly 40 TE trades on both the SPY and the Q, as well as our PayPal credit strangle. We already have the PayPal credit strangle working. It is already set up for this Friday's expiration, but we might come in and tweak that a little bit here today. So that's on the agenda for our trades today. Potential bonus trades, uh, well, the Theta Ferry trade is always on the books as a potential trade. Uh, we did put one on. We are starting the week off strong. Uh, we put one on last night, Sunday night. Yes, we start our trading week on Sundays. Uh, we started with that and it hit really, really quick. Sometimes you have to sit on those for a while. Uh, that thing dropped 100 bucks uh, underneath our pillow before we were even asleep last night. So we'll do it again here today on Monday. Tuesday, uh, we do have U.S. consumer confidence numbers coming out. You know, those can affect the marketplace, and so we'll be aware of that. I will be in the scalping room all day on Tuesday. We had a really good week last week scalping. Um, quite a bit of profit came in from scalping last week. So after I finish this video here, I'm going to be working on our weekly review videos so check those out. But man, it was a good week for us scalping last week. And I, I, I think we've got some good potential this week as well as we try to either push up or down off of this cliff that we've been sitting on. Be working on a zero DTE, obviously, once again. Uh, we're going to be adding a ladder to our Long Vega DIA trade. That trade has just been fantastic 
averaging about 8% return a month on that trade. Just picture perfect. Everything that we drew out as what we would hope to get out of that trade has been uh, accurate so far. So it's been a great trade for us. Uh, we'll be working on our Nat Gas trade on Tuesday. We do need to, uh, unless something dramatically changes, we do need to adjust our put leg on that trade. So we'll be working on that Tuesday. We might even bump that up here to today, uh, just depending on how the price action works. Um, we're looking at a potential T-bond cover. Now I have a I think just incredibly juicy uh, T-bond trade. Well, we do as a group have a uh, just an amazing T-bond trade. It's already brought in quite a bit of income, uh, but uh, the cover, the cover call cover on it that I had on there expired on Friday, fully profitable. So I need to look at the bonds here today and see if I want to cover it again. Bonds kicked off a little bit of a mini rally on Friday. And so I don't know uh, if I'm actually ready to cover this or not. It might have some upside and I might want to just let the thing run, but we'll take a look at that on Tuesday. Our FRT Zebra trade, uh, we're going to be looking at potentially putting, adding a cover to that as well, generating a little bit extra cash flow there. Uh, we have uh, a, a TSLL trade, which is the ETF that tracks Tesla. And we've been scaling in slowly into a long position there. We'll keep working on that. Uh, and then we're going to roll our XLV cover. That trade has been phenomenal. Um, our uh, healthcare trade. And uh, we've been able to cash flow that quite nicely. And uh, we want to continue that. So we'll look to roll our cover for a little bit more additional income. That's all Tuesday, uh, along with, of course, our bonus trade. That's, we will be looking at the Theta Ferry trade once again. Uh, Wednesday, we do have U.S. home sales and oil inventory numbers coming out. Both of those can affect the trades that we are in, most notably our oil trade. But for Wednesday, uh, we're going to focus on a couple of primary things. We're going to focus on a new zero DTE trade, as well as up to three potential uh, earnings trades. Uh, both pre and post earnings. We are in full swing this week with earnings. And so we've got, a, I've got about seven or eight of those on my watch list right now. We'll hone that down on Wednesday to three that I feel are the uh, best risk reward ratio ones. And we'll put those on. Uh, and then of course, again, the Theta Ferry overnight trade that has just been absolutely amazing for us. Thursday, uh, potential market moving news. Well, we do have ECB interest rate announcement coming out. Uh, we also have U.S. durable goods and jobless claims. And all of these things are going to be coming out prior to the cash open. So all of those things could throw maybe a little bit of a monkey wrench or, or uh, at least if nothing else, a little bit of a catalyst into the market open. And so we'll have to be uh, cognizant of that on Thursday. Should be a potentially good day for scalping. We'll have to see how it pans out, but all of those things should set us up quite nicely for a decent day of scalping, at least in the morning. Uh, we'll be working on a zero DTE in our live trading room, uh, as well as adding our gold to our gold ladder and our oil ladder. So we'll continue to add to those trades. Those are overlay trades. We add a new ladder to those every single week uh, so that we have rolling maturities in there. Those have been fantastic. Uh, we haven't had a single losing trade in GLD, and that's uh, a, a, a very, been a very consistent trade for us. Of all of our oil ladders, we've only had one that was a losing trade, and that was really my fault. If uh, we had known uh, that what was going to happen with the future, with the margin requirements on CL, we would have just held it. Uh, and it would have ended up being nicely profitable, but it has still been a, a very good performer for us. And then, of course, again, we will look at an overnight Theta Ferry trade once again. Um, you'll see in our results here in just a second, man, that trade has just been awesome for us. Uh, Friday, we do have you, the, the University of Michigan sentiment reading comes out. That usually doesn't affect the market too much, um, but that's kind of our news for the day. And then we're just going to focus on our zero DTE on Friday. Fridays, usually we're trying to wind down the week. It's been a busy week. And so that will be our, our real main focus. Uh, we do look every Friday for a potential Theta Ferry trade, which would be a futures trade that would expire that next Monday. 
it is a technically an overnight trade, but it's you know three days in length because it expires through the weekend. Uh, but it is usually pretty tough um, to be able to get the premium that we would demand to be exposed to those two extra days of risk. So we always take a look at it, but it, it may or may not be there. However, I do think that we might have the potential for a 3DT futures trade, something that is maybe more of a spread trade uh, with a Friday, uh, putting it on on Friday this week and then having it expire on Monday. So we'll take a look at that as well on Friday. Uh, if we want to take a look at our updated performance results, I did go ahead and combine uh, our uh, our Tuesday, Thursday results with our Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's just a cleaner way to look at the zero DTE. So in terms of the zero DTE, we've had 150 days of trading opportunities this year on the zero DTE. We've done 224 uh, total zero DTE trades. So we don't get two in every day, but we do have a, a pretty high probability of getting one in, at least we have as of late with uh, the amazing IV that we've been getting in the marketplace. Uh, of the 224 zero DTEs that we have taken, 216 have been winners and eight have been losers. Uh, that is incorrect right there where it says no open roll trades. We do have an open roll trade from Friday going on right now. Uh, but this puts us in about 96.5% win rate. We've had two losers here, uh, not back to back, but fairly recent that moved us from six to eight losers on the year. Uh, we were hovering, uh, hovering around a, a 98 and, and, and pushing towards like a 99% success rate. But uh, I, I'm still going to take a 96.5% is pretty darn good. Um, our 40 TE trades were up to 115 wins and uh, seven losses so far. That's been a great trade for us as well. Our IWM weekly credit strangle trade, I, I don't know what to say about it other than it's amazing. Uh, we call it our millionaire maker trade. Uh, you can start with a very small amount of money uh, with these results and in a very short period of time turn, I don't want to say pocket change, it's not pocket change, but an amount of money that most people have access to into a million dollars with the consistent results that we've had here. Uh, 38 trading opportunities. We've double dipped on a few weeks, doubled up. Those are usually FOMC weeks where we take it off on Wednesday, put it right back on after the announcement. Uh, 41 winners, zero losers there. Just it's tough to get better than that. Pairs trades. Uh, we do have 23 pairs trades that we have done so far. We uh, do still have uh, two working. Uh, that actually is now down to one. We're down to one last pairs trade. So we have booked formally 22 winners. We've still got one uh, that is out there that is working. Bear market trades, uh, we've got uh, a couple of new ones working right now. Uh, so we don't have any results for those yet. But we, of the 70 trades that we've taken, 67 have been winners and three have been losers. Our positive Vegas spread trade, we're up to, to seven of these now. Every single one of those has been uh, a winner as well. And what's great about these trades is not just the consistency of them, but these are coming in around 8% return per month. So those have just been fantastic. And they, they, they take hardly any vigilance at all. This is a trade that you can look at maybe once every two or three days. Just pop into your account, take a look at it. It doesn't take a lot of management. Um, so that's been a good trade for us. Our scalping results last week, they were just extraordinary. They were well, well, well above average. Tuesday uh, was a, a fantastic day. Uh, Thursday was even better. I did scalp with quite a bit of money uh, on Thursday. Uh, so that's why that number is as high as it is. Um, almost $57,000 used to scalp on Thursday. Uh, the dragonflies, the double diagonals, uh, the zebras, uh, we're, we're in uh, about uh, five of those right now. All of those have been winners. Our Theta Fairy trades, uh, we're up to 29 of those trades. Uh, 28 of those have been winners. One has been a loser. That's That's been a phenomenal trade for us as well. The Gold Ladder trades are clicking along quite well, quite nicely. Every one of those has been a winner so far. 
uh, those are coming in about one and a half percent a week. So we're shooting for about 6% a month on those. And then our oil ladders, uh, we do have one loser on the oil ladder trade. We have one loser uh, and uh, I just need to bump those totals up. We've taken seven total trades now and uh, six have been winners, one have been losers. But that's been a great, it's been a great trade for us too. This is a, a trade that has tremendous ROI potential, very close in some cases to 15 plus percent a month. So that's been a really strong one for us. The AST program continues to just absolutely dominate. Uh, we are up again. These numbers need to be updated a little bit. We're up closer to about 24% uh, return right now on the year. Market's down about 23%. We're up about 24%. So there you go. That's the 20. There's the 24%. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we're, we're obviously <laughs> tremendously outperforming the market in this passive portfolio and our alpha is about 51% less risk as measured by standard deviation. It's been fantastic. So if you do want to try out any of our programs, you have an absolute no risk guarantee. You can check it out for free. Come in and get a free trial. Take a look at it. Participate with us. Communicate with us. Uh, exchange ideas with us inside of our live trading room. See what we're trading and how we trade it. And then if you sign up for your first month subscription and you don't find that it was absolutely life changing, I'll give you double your money back. So there's uh, absolutely no risk. People ask who are good candidates for our program. Well, for the live trading room, it's, it's good for experienced traders. Not good for new traders, guys. If you don't know how to trade, if you don't know what the strategies are, this is not a place for you. This is a very fast moving trading room. It is for experienced traders. But maybe you need a system. Maybe you need a business plan. Maybe you need a step-by-step uh, -step approach to knowing, hey, today's Tuesday, today's Thursday, today's Friday. This is what I'm going to trade these days. These are the market catalysts that I'm going to have to work off of, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe you need higher level strategies. Maybe you're not familiar with the long Vega credit spreads. Maybe you're not familiar with a Dragonfly. Maybe you're not familiar uh, with a Zebra or some of the other strategies that we employ. So if you need higher level strategies, if you need to move beyond zero DTE, if you are stuck focusing solely on one strategy of any kind, that's not good. Zero DTE, whatever, it doesn't matter. Nobody should be trading one singular strategy. So if, if, if you need to move beyond the zero DTE, then check us out. If you're already in a trading room, uh, that hasn't given you a free trial, that made you pay money to check them out, some place that's not using a real account and showing you real results, somebody place that doesn't record their results and, and give those to you in a time-stamped manner, somebody who doesn't give you live unlimited playback of a video feed of those trades actually happening in case you happen to miss that day, uh, someone that maybe doesn't give you free one-on-one -on -one access to the head trader. You guys have free access to me unlimited contact to me. I always tell everybody, you know, give it a shot. Uh, direct message me at 11 at night. Direct message me at 4 in the morning. You'll get a response. Um, we're, we're trading pretty much uh, 22 plus different strategies, six days a week, 24 hours a day. Um, if you're interested in learning how to trade the zero DTE strategy and almost any strategy for that matter in a dynamic manner rather than a static member. If you are stuck with taking stop losses and thus taking losses, uh, or if you are trading binary trades that they either you put them on like a butterfly, you put it on, it either works or it doesn't. If you want to get away from binary trades and learn how to trade dynamically, this would be a good place for you. Um, zero DTE setups with at least $1,000 a day of daily profit. Go in and check out our weekly review videos for our results day after day after day, week after week after week. There are no guarantees in the marketplace. We can't make you a guarantee or a promise really of any kind, but we can show you potential. And every single one of our zero DTE setups that we look at has the potential to put a thousand bucks in your pocket every single day. And it's just up to you and I as traders to be able to act on that information appropriately 
and garner those results. But the opportunity is there. So if you're trading butterflies or something that don't give you those opportunities, you want to maybe step up your game a little bit, this might be the place. And then, of course, lastly is the 200% guarantee. It's tough to find a reason not to give it a go if all of the barriers of entry have been removed for you. So that would be our live trading room. Uh, our asymmetric trading system, our AST program, is really for investors, not traders. It's a passive system. It takes five minutes a day. We make two to ten portfolio adjustments each morning, and then we set and forget it. We walk away from it. So this isn't for trading. This is for investing. It's for someone that's tired of excessive risk. If you want to do something that's in the market, but uh, effectively half the risk of the marketplace, this would be a place to look. Also, if you uh, are really a bottom line person and you just want to know results, you, you, you don't want a glossy sales brochure. You just want to know, hey, what are your results? Well, we, we've absolutely dominated the market for the last, ever since we put the program in place. We have absolutely dominated the market. We doubled the market's return in 2021. We're well more than double the market's return this year because the market is down about 22% and we're approaching a 22, 23, 24% gain on the year. I don't know how many of you have IRAs, 401ks, mutual funds, ETF programs, broker managed programs that are making a bunch of money this year, that are on track to finish above 30% on the year. But we are, and we're doing it at about half of the market's risk. So if those are interesting to you from an investing standpoint, AST might be a good approach for you. Scalping room, who is a good candidate for our scalping room? Well, it would be the absolute most committed trader. It would be the trader who is working towards being a full-time trader. If you're a full-time trader, you need to take advantage of every opportunity that is, it avails itself to you, and scalping is certainly one of those. It's also really good for the uncommitted trader or the non-full-time trader. If you can only trade once a week, pretty much every single solitary week before the market opens up, at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, we have a very nice news catalyst that will drive the futures markets. And for a 20 to 40 minute window, you have a nice little opportunity there to put maybe $500 to $1,000 in your pocket. Again, there's no guarantees. We have to capitalize on those opportunities. The opportunities are there. So if you only want to trade once or twice a week and have a good shot at putting some decent cash in your pocket place, maybe uh, scalping is for you. Uh, number three, if you are looking for a daily income source, I, I think, you know, obviously as a full time trader, daily income is is important. This isn't an IRA or a retirement account that you're going to draw on 20, 30, 40 years from now. This is something that you need to generate daily income right now. And my goal each day is 500 to 1000 uh, bucks in income off of our trade. So that would be a good setup for you if uh, you are in any of those categories, check out our live scalping room. We do have our mastermind. Our website should be going live here in the next month. Um, but you can mark the dates, May 21st through the 26th next year in Cabo San Lucas. Uh, very, very excited uh, about the mastermind coming up. If you want to try our live trading room, uh, you can just uh, go to the website uh, try zero DTE for free .com. We'll give you a free seven days access. You can come check it out, trade with us. If you want to look at our investing portfolio, you can go to try AST for free .com. You get a two-week free trial there with that particular program. And if you want to scalp with us, come hit the website tryscalpingnow.com and uh, we'll try to find setups that can put 500 to 1,000 bucks in your pocket each day. Again, no guarantees. We can't make guarantees in the marketplace, but that's what those potentials are. So again, guys, uh, thanks uh, for sticking with me here. This video is a little longer than our normal preview videos. Hope you have a good trading day. Hope you have a good trading week. Drop some comments uh, in the comment section below on what you're trading this week and how it's going for you. I'd love to hear from you.